Monster Kids. This is your buddy Aiden, and this is a special video for my Patreon backers about the making of Dr. Caliban and the Sinister Monster Doom Legion cartoon. Uh, for those of you who are watching this video who do not support me on Patreon, please consider throwing a little cash my way at patreon.com slash scapula. It helps me continue to do what I do, and that is to amuse you with horrible, disgusting things such as Dr. Caliban and the Sinister Monster Doom Legion. Let's have some fun. So, the story... The main reason I wanted to do this cartoon is because I love the Sinister Monster Doom Legion so much. They are some of the most fun characters that I get to work with in this series. And they get a little pushed to the back sometimes because a lot of the series does focus on scapula and the more dramatic aspects at times, such as his uh, broken relationships. So for this one, just for the sake of making a fun cartoon, I figured let's just focus on these guys. So those of you who remember Scapula and the Sinister Monster Doom Legion will probably recall the story Giant Monsters All Out Mega Giant Battle Monsters Mega Tao, who cares what it was called. But it was very much an homage to the works of Eiji Tsuburaya Tokusatsu series of Japanese sci-fi, you know, Godzilla, Ultraman. So if that story was an homage to Tsuburaya, then this particular story was an homage to Willis O'Brien, Ray Harryhausen, and some of the great American monster makers. I love Lost World stories, and you don't really see much of them anymore, obviously. I had been wanting to do a Lost World story for a long time and just figured, you know what, what the hell, let's have some fun with it. Let's send a group of these idiot villains to an island of dinosaurs and see what happens. What is going to kill them next? What is going to step on them next? What is going to crap on them next? So very basic, very stupid little boy humor, but you know what, that's always fun. So again, this story stars villains, and the great thing about uh, telling stories with villains is that they can be as horrible as possible and we can still enjoy them, and that's where we have our main star is Dr. Caliban, who is without a doubt the most awful, terrible, disgusting, nasty little character I've ever made, and sometimes that can be funny. A lot of Scapula is balancing out between when he's when he needs to be relatable and when he can be awful. And with Dr. Caliban, it's like, you don't need that balance at all. You can be as horrible as you want with him. Granted, you can only take it in small doses, which is why he's just in this 10-minute cartoon. And I wouldn't get your hopes up on seeing a long-running Dr. Caliban series, because seriously, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> with Dr. Caliban, it's just about being the most annoying little idiot possible, and you get this, you really hit that nasally voice, and you really want to make people skin peel whenever you mention him, and I'm smarter than you are. Which is based on a lot of terrible people I've had to deal with, either as a kid or as an adult, so being able to channel all that negative energy and put it in this horrible little troll, who is conveniently the size of a football, so he can be punted across the horizon and get what's coming to him. So it's a little cathartic in that regards. There have been God knows how many members of the team. The last head count was the group. That there's nine members of the group. So I just had to choose however many I could put into a single cartoon without getting it overwhelmed. I didn't want to focus too much on the more dramatic characters in the series like Scapula, Hypnagia, Gemini, Bone China, Nas, or a lot of those folks. This was mostly just meant to be the monsters and having simple fun with them. Thragor is a very fun character for me because I love monsters so much, obviously, so having a big beast man be a central character of the series was always an important choice. He's been around since the very first zine, and I love using him in these stories. Uh, Thragor's voice is just me lowering it down as gravelly as I can get. Sometimes I have to exhale while I'm talking, which gives me the hiccups. And then from there, in Adobe Edition, there's a bit of cheating with his voice where I have to drop his voice by negative two semitones just to get it as low as possible because I'm not content with the depth of my own voice for the sake of this seven and a half foot tall giant monster. Toxic is lots of fun to do. He's pretty popular in the series, mostly just because somebody has to be the voice of reason. Toxic is just me talking at a deadpan tone, you know, just be slow, be emotionless. And then from there, we put in a in Adobe Edition, I use a uh, modulation flanger to give him that robotic tone, which was kind of a last-minute decision with making this cartoon. That was just sort of an afterthought. It gives a nice little touch to his nature, the fact that he's so deadpan that he almost sounds like a robot. The rest of the team are much simpler and don't require much dialogue, which is good for the sake of this cartoon and keeping things moving, since it's focusing so much on Dr. Caliban. Tigodactyl is just... <laughs> Gog Magog. 
<laughs> and then you have the little one, which sounds a little more like a Frank Walker Grimman. <laughs> and there's Babarus. <laughs> that voice is actually a voice I used in a high school animation about this horrible, disgusting uh, hobo warthog. So of course, when I have a when I eventually made a hobo warthog for the Scapula series, I always imagined he would have the same sort of voice. Hey man, hey you got a dollar? Hey you give me a dollar, man, I will go over there and kill you, man. But I saw the hyenas of Holocaust is a very nasty stereotype. I don't do too many women's voices very well, but for her, since she's just a total cartoon... You dare to do a off in my presence? A lot of the monster wars are actually my own, but they take a lot... It, there's a lot of cheating involved, where you would take a sound like... <laughs> and then you, and you digitally add a lot of reverb, a lot of bass, and they're just stretched out to like three to five times the length. And then you get the uh, wide variety of monster sounds, which are fun to perform. But again, you gotta you gotta take good care of the old vocal cords. So this cartoon is proudly made in semi animation, which means I don't have full access to a, a, a team of animators who are willing to draw all the frames. And if I were to do that myself, it would take years of my life. Maybe who knows. But it's not, it's not the amount of time I want to invest in something that involves hobo warthogs eating giant caterpillars and little trolls banging Nazi dominatrixes. My day job is I am a storyboard artist for films, animation, games, commercials, all that fun stuff, and I primarily use a program called Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, which is the very best storyboard uh, drawing program I have ever used. An animatic is, it's a semi-animated movie, and again, it's almost like a motion comic where it's just the images and some in-betweens. Depending on the production, I may have to do more in-betweens than others. There have been some animated series I have worked on professionally that required a lot of in-betweens to the point where it practically was a fully animated uh, movie, just in black and white. And there have been times when I have worked on uh, color storyboards, which is very rare and extremely time-consuming, so thankfully that doesn't happen very often. So thankfully, this sort of style wasn't a problem with the Dr. Caliban cartoon because having it in black and white was totally fine because a lot of the movies and the sources that inspired this, The Lost World, King Kong, and the likes, were black and white movies, and it's a visual medium that I love, love, love to death. So it was great to kind of do that in the style, and then from that style it came the idea of just doing it in completely as a fake 1930s, 1940s monster movie, the soundtrack taken from public domain uh, actual monster movies, which was fun to do. We plot things out first in a very rough stage. This is almost like stick figures. Those of you who have uh, read the Scapula comics and my behind the scenes there know that I primarily use the Marvel method of storytelling, having the, the idea first, plotting it out in visuals, then going back and doing the dialogue, and a lot of that was true of this one. I had the general idea of how I wanted the story to go, I roughed it out, the dialogue is put in, and I start doing the cleanups, I more depth acting, and in the end you get a cartoon that sort of makes sense, sort of doesn't, but it's my own fault anyway. So for you Patreon backers watching this video, I have a big surprise for you. This was not the only uh, entry in the series. There is another episode coming up, and I had so much fun making this uh, movie that I decided to put out a sequel, and you guys are going to get the first previews of it. Now, if you loved the Sinister Monster Doom Legion in this cartoon, and you hated Dr. Caliban, you're going to love this news because this is the title. Yep. Great news, isn't it? Alright, we scored 15 bucks! <laughs> that was some high stuff. Yeah, well, as long as we don't have to take orders from that annoying little troll, then we're doing fine. Well, mostly fine. So we have the Sinister Monsters are on another adventure again with a replacement member who is going to be a little familiar for, if you're familiar with my comics. There is a new opponent who is seriously going to whoop some ass and we're going to have to see whether or not our ghoulish gang can take him on and discover his big secret. A lot of action, a lot of thrills in this one and we're going to be seeing it very soon. <laughs>
So that's my cheap behind the scenes look at Dr. Caliban and the Sinister Monster Doom Legion. Thank you so very much, patrons. I really appreciate all of your support. Please let me know what you thought of the cartoon. Please let me know what you thought of this uh, ridiculous behind the scenes video. Leave your comments. Uh, leave your comments on YouTube too, so people who are watching it know that you've learned a lot about how to make rotten cartoons. And thank you so very much again for your support. We'll be seeing more of the monsters again before you know it. Take care, guys. Oh yeah, we forgot to kick your ass. <laughs>